Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football 4-1, Manchester City against Liverpool. An absolute drubbing by Manchester City. Liverpool, end of an era, we've spoken about that before, but that's disgraceful from, from Liverpool today. I mean, as a United fan, I can put a smile on my face to a certain extent, but look, I want Arsenal to win the league. And, and I'm not a big fan of Man City. I think with the 100 charges hanging over them and that sort of... I, just, I find Man City a bit soulless, I think some people do, but... I've got to put a hand up and say that's Jack Grealish's best performance in a Man City shirt. Man City today were very, very good and easy on the eye. Alvarez, you know, made them press from the front a lot better than they do with Haaland. And they moved the ball a bit around a lot better than they do with Haaland. Haaland's world class. They probably still win the game 4-1, but it was a different show. Mares, I think, is a fantastic player. Underrated. He was brilliant. But Liverpool, let's start off with that. Where do they go from here? What's going on with Liverpool? Because that is a disgrace. And look, I, I've begrudgingly said you know I, I don't I don't like giving Liverpool praise but begrudgingly over the years I've said Jurgen Klopp's done an amazing job uh, for a long time I thought I'd never see Liverpool win a Premier League title he's rebuilt that football club rock and roll football high intensity high line high chance creation that's disappeared this year why is it disappeared maybe because they're tired from last year I don't know but it has absolutely exposed a couple of players in that team Van Dijk and Trent Alexander-Arnold have been world class over the Liverpool Renaissance years of the last three or four. And the reason for that is because high line, Trent's basically a right winger. You see a lot more of him attacking. And Van Dijk, obviously, quick centre back. Most of the time you're attacking, you're only really dealing with long balls over the top and he's got recovery pace. As soon as that Liverpool defence this season has gone to the edge of the box, and we saw it as early as, um, was it Napoli? in the Champions League group stage in the away game. As soon as that Liverpool defence has got to defend its edge of its box, it exposes the Van Dijks and Trents of this world as not particularly good defenders. Now, Van Dijk's a bit different. There's more analysis needed on that. But I certainly think Van Dijk's a better centre-back when he's playing on the halfway line and not on the edge of his box. But Trent Alexander-Arnold this season, um, look, whatever he is going forward and his free kicks are fantastic, but Liverpool don't attack as much and he's not getting forward as much. He's having to defend. He couldn't defend anything at the moment. He, he, you know, he is absolutely all over the place. He, you know, he's like an ice cream in a, in a in a wind tunnel. It's all he's all over the place. It's it, it's not good to watch, and they're struggling. They're struggling big time, and it's 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 it's, 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 it's almost like a, an open door to goals. Um, Liverpool actually one nil up. Keep it one nil till half time. Defend. Look, you one nil up at the Etihad. Defend, like. Whether you're, whether you're Brighton, Southampton, Manchester United, you've got the goal, you defend, right? They've gone and conceded four goals from 1-0 up because they can't defend. And that is pitiful. And as I say, talking as a football fan and not as a Man United fan who enjoys Liverpool losing, that is, that is pitiful. It is absolutely disgraceful to put up on a show like that defensively. To concede the goals they conceded, Trent's all over the place on the first one, and then there's goals straight after half time. They're just nowhere. I mean, look, they look good goals from Man City, but they're completely preventable as a defensive coach watching that back, or as a coach like Jurgen Klopp. Every goal that Liverpool scored should have been stopped. It's all down to positioning, communication, organisation. And this has been a problem all season. So I feel sorry for Salah, Nunez, Gakpo. Uh, Jota, Firmino, and when Diaz comes back, I feel sorry for them because it's it's a bit like going to work with your hair done, um, and you know you've got you've got a bit of fake tan on, maybe a bit of moisturiser, got a nice goatee. Um, it's a little bit like that, and and maybe you've got a nice shirt and tie on, but you've got no pants on and no shoes. Doesn't matter how good your top half looks, your bottom half and your mid your, mid, your midriff is exposed, and that's what Liverpool are doing. No one's paying any attention to the potential of how you've groomed and what you've dressed on your top half because you're, you're naked on the bottom half and around the middle. Um, and it's not a pretty sight. Um, and that's Liverpool this season. I, I, I've heard people criticise Salah and this, that and the other. If you're not attack, attacking as much, you're not getting as much. And their midfield is not as good as it was and their defence is, is a joke. So where Liverpool go from here, very interesting to see what happens. Um, look, they need Jurgen Klopp to stay. They need to spend money, and those two things are not definite. I think Klopp needs to feel passionate. His past is that if he feels he's being exposed or ridiculed or unable to do anything, he will walk. 
And then you look at um, the money in the summer. Have they got the money? They don't just need Jude Bellingham. They need Jude Bellingham and a De Jong. They probably need another centre-back. They certainly need another full-back. They probably need 200 million and four or five signings. That's what Liverpool need. Um, well, that's a big, big investment. And, you know, next season, Newcastle on the rise, United on the rise, Arsenal are on the rise, City ain't going anywhere. Chelsea, could, that's five. Where did Liverpool fit into that? As for Man City, well, look, Man City will, will be there. Um, who knows what happens with these FA charges? I think most people expect them to go away. So Man City ain't going anywhere. In relation to the title race, they're capable of winning their last 10 games. We know that. So Arsenal have got it all to do. But the interesting thing for Man City for me today was that, and I want to make, mention the referee. I still think that that's a second yellow card, but I'm not going to dwell on it too much because it's not Man City's fault. That's just bad refereeing and we see it every week. And also Arsenal and Liverpool can't be saying, well, you know, we're, we're rely you can't rely on a referee. You can't rely on a referee in the Premier League full stop. Ultimately, the game's the game. It was 11 against 11 and you got beat 4-1. Um, Man City, I, I, I said it before the game. I thought I'm not taking anything away from Haaland. I'd love Haaland at Man United. I'm sure everyone would like Haaland. He's arguably the best striker in the world. But they, the thing with Haaland is he plays every single game and he plays number nine and you have to play a certain way to to get the best out of Haaland. He's not as good as pressing as Alvarez is, and he's not as good on the link-up play as Alvarez is. So we saw a different Man City. We saw a Man City a little bit like we've seen last season and the season before. A unit that uh, presses effectively together and, you know, little intricate passing. That doesn't mean they're not, that doesn't mean that that Man City team today is better than the team that's got Haaland in it. It was just a bit different. Um, the interesting thing is that I would probably like to say, and if I was a City fan, I would certainly say, I'd like to see Alvarez play a little bit more. Um, I would. I'd like to see Alvarez play a little bit more, but obviously when you've got a player like Erling Haaland, it's like it's like Spurs with Richarlison. You're never going to drop Kane, and they're never going to drop Haaland. So, um, but I wasn't surprised by what Man City did today, and I thought in, in many ways... Liverpool might have had a better chance if Haaland did play because I think Man City played a, a style of football that was always going to be intricate passes and arguably Alisson was Liverpool's best player with Gakpo. So they had other chances as well. I mean, Grealish for me was magnificent today, by the way, as well. 100% um, man of the match. Best game I've seen him play for Man City. And, you know, probably the first time I've looked at him and gone, you could see why they spent £100 million on him. So, But it's helpful when you're playing against Trent, isn't it? Get your comments in below, smash a like on the video, I'll speak to you later.